Look at the funding against progressives. These numbers are pretty staggering. 3.6 million to defeat Nida Alam. 2.9 million to defeat Erica for US. 3.3 million to defeat Summer for PA. And 800,000 to defeat Jamie for Oregon. These billionaire funded super PACs went all out to defeat, to defeat working class women of color. Somebody's like Bernie Sanders has a, has something to click. Oh, congratulations to Summer for PA for her extraordinary grassroots campaign in Pennsylvania's District 12, in which she defeated millions of dollars of right wing super PAC money, as well as the Democratic establishment. Summer will be a great progressive member of Congress. This is base. Uh, it looks like there's some votes remaining in her district, but they're all overwhelmingly in precincts that she crushed in and they're all election day votes so they expect her her lead to only expand further we needed this hopium this hopium injection i was flagging a little bit i was i was exhausted i was like there's just no shot there's no positivity biden is such a loser he's so below all of our expectations which were already so low i love bernie man bernie's the best oh boy a Republican super PAC on Tuesday fell short in its bid to intervene in a Democratic primary against state rep uh, Summer Lee. We haven't talked about Summer Lee yet. It's time for us to talk about Summer Lee. This is her victory speech to become the representative for Pittsburgh. Medicare for all, baby. incredible victory and in case you're not grasping and i haven't explained it well enough i haven't drawn a picture here but republican super PACs and apac israel's lobbying spent millions to defeat her to run ads like this to run ads like this she calls herself a democrat but summer lee said she wanted to dismantle the democratic party dismantle it and she's done everything in her power to do just that when Joe Biden was running against Trump, Summer Lee attacked Biden's character, said he'd take us backwards, and Lee refused to support Biden's infrastructure. That was plan. 2019. That was 2019. Summer Lee Facebook, April 25th, 2019. Are you fucking kidding me? Said he'd take us backwards, and Lee refused to support Biden's infrastructure plan that's now rebuilding bridges and roads in western Pennsylvania. Summer Lee, more interested in fighting Democrats than getting results. UDP is responsible for the content of this ad. They spent millions and millions. I know there are some people, if you could find me, uh, could, if you guys could find me these uh, from the community or from wherever, where people are getting four negative mailers against her in their mailbox every day. Refused to endorse infrastructure, motherfucker Kurt Schrader did too, and Biden endorsed him. When we talk to people, when we say ours is a movement for a living wage and union rights, people come. When we say ours is a movement that believes that everybody should and will have clean air and clean water, they come. When we talk about who we are blessing and who we're fighting for, they come. Have faith in this. Have faith in this movement if you have faith in nothing else. Know what's on the line. It's time 
that we have a people-centered, people-powered politics that changes our region, changes our nation, and take that movement to the next level right here in Western Pennsylvania. Summer Lee faces APAC spending onslaught in final days of Pennsylvania primary. With the progressive state rep ahead in the polls, the pro-Israel lobby's PAC has dished out attack ads ahead of Tuesday's race. Look at the funding against progressives. These numbers are pretty staggering. 3.6 million to defeat Nida Alam. 2.9 million to defeat Erica for US. 3.3 million to defeat Summer for PA. And 800,000 to defeat Jamie for Oregon. These billionaire-funded super PACs went all out to defeat, to defeat working class women of color. APAC also endorsed 109 Republicans who refused to certify the 2020 presidential election results. Their super PAC also accused a black state legislator of not being a real Democrat, even though her opponent was a former GOP staffer. This is the thing that's wild, is the guy she's running against is a fucking re- former Republican staffer. Billionaire-funded super PACs poured staggering amounts of money into Democratic primaries to defeat working-class candidates. And guess what? They've mostly failed. Three million in a p- congressional primary. A congressional primary. Fucking sad and summer lee prevailed even with 3.3 million spent against her in a congressional primary a staggering sum an unbelievable sum of money so with 100 of the vote in summer lee appears to have defeated steve Irwin, according to the new york times summer lee the house candidate for the bernie sanders wing of the democratic party appears to have defeated steve Irwin, overcoming a flood of money from pro-israel groups with 100 of the vote in she has an 862 point or 862 vote lead rather that is in dis- it's fucking disgusting to be honest with you for Irwin, a former republican u.s senate staffer it would take something of a miracle to turn numbers like that around in six weeks in the six weeks that remained but ahead of tuesday's context Irwin's backers have attempted to close the gap with something else a tsunami of outside spending funneled through two major pro-israel organizations that have made it their mission to undermine progressive democrats and contested primaries unless that because this is the only source of risk for Israel in America to for their genocidal apartheid regime is left-wing Democrats. That's the only people that are ever going to criticize the status quo. So they've got to, so they're trying to take them out. A foreign government is intervening in our politics so that they can get free billions from our government. In less than a month, the United Democracy Project, a political action committee, the Amer- American Israel Public Affairs Committee, poured more than a million into attacks in the Pennsylvania's 12th district. I just showed you one. The bulk of the messaging attack Lee. In total, United Dem- Democracy Project has spent more than $2.3 million on the race so far. Lee is one of several progressive House candidates who have come into the crosshairs of APAC and its counterpart, Democratic Majority for Israel, which APAC's operatives launched in 2019. And their first ad? Do you want to know what their first ad was? Attacking Bernie Sanders' heart attack. That was their very first ad. The most important thing is we have to be Trump. We've seen the damage that Trump and the Republican Congress have done. I doubt if Bernie Sanders can beat Trump. I like Bernie. I think he has great ideas. But Michigan, Pennsylvania, Iowa... They're just not going to vote for a socialist. I do have some concerns about Bernie Sanders' health, considering the fact that he did have a heart attack. I think it's very important that the Democrats nominate somebody that can beat Trump. I don't feel as though Bernie Sanders would do well against Donald Trump. I just don't think Bernie can beat Trump. DMFI PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. That was their first ad. The groups justify their spending with a hardline stance opposing any criticism of the Israeli state. Notice that they didn't have an ad about Israel. Notice they didn't go, Bernie Sanders is not strong enough of a supporter of Israel. If you support Israel uh, and want to have it never be criticized, vote against Bernie. They made up bullshit attacks. Disgusting filth. Even as Israel defense forces relentlessly attack Palestinian civilians, journalists, and mourners, in reality, this stance enables the pro-Israel lobby to attack progressives on any number of fronts. When you look at who DMFI has spent money attacking, they also just so happen to want to hold Israel, the biggest recipient of U.S. aid, accountable for how they spend billions of American tax dollars. Okay, you know when you go to your high school reunion and the girl who used to bully you like just because you took your backpack to parties is all of a sudden a yoga teacher and she's talking about like inner peace and loving kindness and you're like, oh, I don't know, maybe she's changed. But then you trip and you spill your watery vodka soda all over yourself and you hear her in the corner kind of snort and talk to her mean friends. And you're like, okay, so you're just the same dark hearted girl you've always been. 
Okay, that is what APAC is doing with the new super PAC, DMFI. Let me explain. For over 60 years, a mishmash lineup of CEOs, world leaders, and American politicians from both major parties have gathered once a year at a conference hosted by a group called APAC. America's pro-Israel lobby. Close to 20,000 people come through to listen to speakers wax poetic about how they support Israel more than the person who was on the lectern five minutes earlier. It's sort of like Coachella for lawmakers, except without the drugs, overpriced outfits, or Brockhampton. So basically just a ton of dehydrated, sweaty, rich people. For a long time, the APAC conference has been one of the only places where both parties come together. Recently, though, the Israeli government and subsequently APAC have shifted so far to the right that some Democrats have become dissuaded from cozying up to the lobby that welcomes, among its speakers, Pastor Miles Holmes. He's your quintessential right-wing conspiracy theorist. He hits all the classics, anti-Semitic Soros stuff, claiming Obama was born in Kenya, but he honestly also has some more creative stuff in his repertoire. Not one lover of the Bible, not one lover of Jesus, not one Christian has ever been abducted by an alien. Honestly, you got me there, Pastor. I mean, that feels airtight, and I mean, as a Jew, I am being beset by aliens almost at all times. This is You know, this when is you're Apex. at your Seder and you get bombarded by aliens? You're not Elijah! What are you doing here? What are you doing next, stealing the hockey coming? In response to an American public that's becoming more wise to APAC's problematic faves, operatives affiliated with APAC created a super PAC that doesn't carry the same baggage. It's called DMFI, and it stands for Democratic Majority for Israel, which Global is a bit of a misnomer since only a minority of Americans and a smaller number of Democrats support sending Israel a blank check. And yes, Lots of names aren't 100% accurate. French fries originated in Belgium, koala bears are marsupials, and Lil Baby is 27. But DMFI is just straight up a bad attempt at a rebrand. Lil Baby? DMFI is to APAC what Snoop Lion is to Snoop Dogg. Like it's just the same guy. D -O -D. Just like APAC, DMFI's goal is to stop any criticism of the Israeli government's actions. Even as the Israeli government continues to build illegal settlements, bulldoze kindergartens, and bomb hospitals. Instead of being honest about their intentions, DMFI spends millions of dollars on attack ads against progressives, often without ever mentioning Israel. And while they claim to oppose anti-Semitism, the first candidate they launched an attack ad against was a Jew. And yes, not all Jews unconditionally support Israel. But the Jewish candidate they went after just so happens to look like he was one of the original Israelites to wander the desert. In their very first ad, they didn't bring up Israel once. The most important thing is, we have to be Trump. We've seen the damage that Trump and the Republicans- By the way, APAC loves Trump. APAC doesn't want to defeat Trump. They don't care about Trump. It's about deception and getting one of their patsies in power. They don't give a fuck. They love Trump over there. Trump has a higher approval rating than almost every any other American president in Israel. What can Congress have done? I doubt if Bernie Sanders can beat Trump. My favorite thing about that clip is the inspiring music it's set to. Like what she's saying is such a bummer, but the music is telling us we should cheer. It'd be sort of like if I were like, my neck hurts. The irony, of course, is that this ad's message is we need to beat Trump. But even though DMFI calls itself a democratic group, many of its donors routinely bankroll Republican campaigns. When Nina Turner ran for Congress in Ohio's 11th district, the attack ad DMFI aired portrayed her as someone who isn't really a Democrat. So what's Nina Turner really up to? Nina Turner is running as a Democrat, but really is not a Democrat. That's funny, because DMFI raised $5.5 million from Republican mega donors. Apparently, being a Democrat means occasionally being a Republican. That's exactly what it means. In 2020, at the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, DMFI used its time and money to attack Jamal Bowman, a black middle school principal running for Congress. Bowman angered DMFI by saying the U.S. should place any conditions at all on how aid to Israel is used. That suggestion was seen as an existential threat to Israeli aid by DMFI and its backers. 
While Republicans threw temper tantrums about sending American families money during a global pandemic, Congress still managed to send Israel $3.3 billion. And look, as somebody who's never had $3.3 billion, I can't speak directly to what having that kind of money looks like, but I kind of feel like it's a lot. Just like a quick back of napkin calculation, it would cover my groceries for 634,615 years. And if you're a critic of Jamal Bowman, it's the same as the salary of 34,883.7 middle school principals. It would even cover three whole semesters at NYU. If there were ever a chance to use one of those giant novelty checks, it should be presented by founder of DMFI Mark Melman to DMFI founder Mark Melman. He paid himself $1 million from DMFI in 2019 and 2020. And he had them pay his firm over $650,000 for polling services, data, and rent. I'll do polling services for half of that. Look, for $300,000, I'll ask people what they think about your stuff and for sure get back to you, no problem. Mark Melman might not be conventionally cool, but on the other hand, DMFI's don't- Man, isn't it weird that people like Mark Melman can just like walk around and there's no organized opposition to guys like this like we have all this information why don't we go and deal with these like deal with it by like i don't know boycotting all their stuff you know if mark melman just walked out of his front door and got bam hit with a boycott you know a boycott a boycott against any of his polling services by any candidate right that would really hurt his bottom line donors are also not cool Instead, their supporters are people like DMFI board member Archie Gottesman, who once tweeted about wanting to burn Gaza. Another big- What the fuck? Gaza is full of monsters. Time to burn the whole place. Won't matter. The UN will just give another meaningless sanction. At IDF spokesperson. Actual genocidal freak. How are you not banned from that? Oh, wait, it's okay to say you want to genocide Arabs and Palestinians. Yeah, that's fine. Did ...about wanting to burn Holy Gaza. Jesus. Another big DMFI player is Stacey Schusterman. She's the chairwoman of Samson Energy, an oil and gas corporation. Girl boss alert. She donated $1.6 million to DMFI, and she and her family are extensively involved in fracking and deep water drilling. But don't worry, she calls herself a Democrat. People like <laughs> Stacey Schusterman posture as liberal, but she's not out here actually trying to hold herself accountable. The Mighty Kiwi's mascot is holding a spoon, but he's not actually gonna eat himself. Or is he? When you look at who DMFI has spent money attacking, it makes you wonder. What do Nina Turner, Jamal Bowman, and Bernie Sanders all have in common? I've hooked up with all of them. No, sorry, I I'm kidding. Uh, they all just want to work to make the Democratic Party work for the American people. And they also just so happen to want to hold Israel, the biggest recipient of US aid, accountable for how they spend billions of American tax dollars. Seems fair to me. But because of that, they're apparently not real Democrats. Just because these progressive politicians don't think we should send Israel a blank check when Americans still don't have basic things like health care during a global pandemic. To which I say, if that's your vision of what a Democrat is, babe, you're a Republican. So the next time you see an ad on TV that says this, DMFI pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. Remember what it's really saying? God, this ad man. may or may not be brought to you by DMFI pack, which is not to be confused with APAC, even though their donors gave DMFI millions in 2020. Democratic majority for Israel is definitely not a front Chantel for a far right group funded and supported by some of the world's That's worst the worst part, man. DMFI pack should definitely when you not have be a, a billionaire you know, a blank check. mainstream Democrats pack, which shares office space and even pays DMFI. Mainstream Democrats pack is also spending to defeat progressives, but it's totally not basically the same organization as DMFI. DMFI pack is also not to be confused with Mark Melman's other organization, Citizens for a Free Iran, which contracted racist anti-Muslim extremist Frank Gaffney to defeat Obama and Biden's signature foreign policy achievement, the Iran nuclear deal. Symptoms of watching a DMFI ad may include dizziness, dry mouth, the inability to see humanity in Palestinians, stomach pain, vomiting, an insatiable desire to defeat candidates want to make the world a better place, headaches, vertigo, a sense of impending doom, indigestion, loss of appetite, the inescapable realization that a specter is on the understanding that all the power of the old ruling class meant that people hold their lives against us. Trump and Putin, McConnell and Jesus Christ, man. Can't believe it worked.
Can't believe it worked. Really hate to see it. <sighs> May that the indiscriminate use of the phrase Israel has a right to defend itself is standard fare for the justification of atrocities committed against marginalized people. At the time, Israeli police had recently attacked worshiper at the Alaska Mosque. As we fight against injustice here in the movement for black lives, we must stand against injustice everywhere, Lee wrote. In inhumanities against the Palestinian people cannot be tolerated or justified. While the Jewish Chronicle questioned Irvin about his challenger's tweets six months later, claiming they have been understood by some as anti-Zionist and anti-Semitic, Pittsburgh's WESA noted that the Chronicle did not identify anyone who made that claim. Even with some Irwin supporters seem wary of his accusing Lee of anti-Semitism, the news station pointed out. Fucking vile bullshit. By the way, this is why Summer Lee's victory is so impressive. She took $3.3 million of negative ads and won. And she will be representing Pittsburgh. One of the safest seats in Pennsylvania is Pennsylvania has an outright member of the squad, bro. Groups like APAC and DMFI don't have much name recognition, even among Democratic primary voters and even amongst high-level operatives and journalists. Some of the people at the highest levels of the Democratic Party politics have no idea what these groups are and what their political goals are. Partisan criticism has been mounting for over a month, with some of the endorsements were released. March led to its members. APAC defended its glowing slate, writing, this is no movement moment for pro-Israel movement to become selective about its friends. The longtime Pennsylvania Democrat who Lee and Irwin are com competing to replace wasn't shy to pick sides in the contest that quickly pitted progressives against the local party machine. Doyle and Senator Bernie Sanders weighed in on the same day while Doyle announced his support for Irwin. Sanders endorsed Lee. You don't get anything done by being Bernie Sanders or the squad. Get wow wow get fucked you know what we did get done beating your ass beating your ass red Irwin, who led a division at his pittsburgh law firm offering services in the union avoidance has been buoyed by almost three million in outside spending progressive groups including justice democrats working families party pack and the congressional progressive caucus pack have spent over 1.7 million to support lee's campaign so they were outspent more than two to one or roughly two to one. The Pack for J Street, a nonprofit that advocates for progressive foreign policy toward Israel, made a joint endorsement of Lee and Dickinson in April. Fucking useless. J Street, you fucking suck. You fucking suck. Last month, APAC sent a fundraising email with the subject line, Act Now, Anti-Israel Forces Want to Silence You, that attacks Lee and two other congressional candidates in North Carolina, Erica Smith and Nida Alam, both also progressive women of color, as anti-Israel candidates. The, uh, Mark Melman, the head of DF DMFI, claimed to The Intercept last month that criticism from the U.S. left emboldens the Israeli right. The anti-Israel far left has propped up the Israeli right and done tremendous damage to the prospects for peace between Israel and the Palestinians, he said. You have a member of your group that said the Gaza should be burned! After UDP released its April ad scorning the notion that Lee calls herself a Democrat, several party members that's backing Lee's campaign, including State House Minority Leader Jonah McClinton and Pittsburgh Mayor Ed Ganey, condemned the messaging and called on Irwin to denounce it. As Democrats from across the Commonwealth, we find it shameful that you would team up with a corporate super PAC that has endorsed over 100 pro-insurrection re Republican, pro insurrectionist Republicans to attack and smear our Democratic colleague. When you are literally on the same side as insurrectionists, I guess the only way to defend yourself is to attack the lone black woman in the race that has done more to expand and turn out our electorate for Democrats than anyone in this race. Irwin's campaign told the outlet that while the candidate cannot control super PAC spending or messaging, the ads appear to be true. A spokesperson pointed out to Lee's criticism of Joe Biden during the 2020 presidential primary, including an observation of the then candidate's casual racism and said, in the scheme of things, Rep Lee has, dar has far more explaining to do. Like many of the president's left wing leaning critics, Lee went, later went on to campaign for Biden. It doesn't matter if you do your job. If you, if you bend the knee to a centrist, they'll stab you in the back a thousand fucking times over. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm going to support people like Summer Lee. I'm going to support people like John Fetterman. But bending my knee and putting my back into any centrist? Never again. If you want to do that, fine. I'll give, I like my, throw them a vote. You know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a secret ballot. So you don't know what I do when, when the ballot box, actually, you have no fucking clue what I do. I might throw them a vote, but I'm not going to put my back into it. I'm not going to campaign for them. I'm not going to give them positive press. I'm not going to give them money. 
If she wins on Tuesday, Lee will be the first black woman elected to Congress from Pennsylvania. She has led efforts to end cash bail at the state level and is running for federal office on a platform that includes the Green New Deal, Medicare for All, and the promotion of labor unions. The idea of having a black woman as a congressperson on its face is very attractive, Irwin said in a March town hall led by the Jewish Federation of Greater Pittsburgh. Although he supported Lee when we first met, I know how she's worked with other people in the community. I know how she's worked with people in business. I know how she's worked with people in the house and government. And I can tell you, it does not indicate that it would be as conductive to getting things done. Responding in the tweet, Lee said the comments were ev evidence of misogynoir facing countless qualified black women who threaten white male hegemony. And, and as we see, it doesn't just come from Republicans. We are once again seeing what happens when Republican-backed corporate power is threatened by a working-class black woman fighting to bring people-powered leadership to her community. Almost $3 million was spent trying to stop Pennsylvanians from electing the, her, their first black congresswoman. Imagine if that money was instead being used to protect Democrats' majority in November. In fact, APAC is going to fight to remove that. The influx of outside spending from DMFI and APAC on Irwin's side and from Justice Democrats and WFP on Lee has come out on top of that reserve. Every single member of the Democratic leadership in Congress, as well as President Obama, the head of the Congressional Black Caucus, and 20 members of the House Progressive Caucus have been endorsed by APAC. Steve Irwin is proud to stand up for the Jewish state of Israel and America's strongest ally in the Middle East. Well, eat shit and fucking die. Summer Lee winning is incredible. What a champion. You have an obligation to like, comment, and subscribe.